We have a lot of great sayings that we use to try and pluck up our courage in difficult times. Whatever doesn't kill you only makes you stronger. You can pull yourself up by your own bootstraps, suck it up, and so on and so forth. We remind ourselves that we are tough, strong people perfectly capable of handling anything thrown our way. After all, we have done it before, so we can do it again. We can't be weak. We have to bear the difficult times on our shoulders. That's what it means to take responsibility and live our lives, doesn't it? We need to be tough and not shirk responsibility. Yet, over the last number of weeks and months, how many of us have felt close to breaking? Close to being completely overwhelmed by the events of 2020? We are faced with a global pandemic that has caused so much of our society to screech to a halt. We are faced with economic fallout that will plague us for many years as a result of trying to curb the spread of the pandemic. There are also signs of a rising mental health crisis in our world, a crisis that will impact our world in a real, in a very serious way. We have seen racial tensions explode in the United States and throughout the world, forcing all of us to look deeply at beliefs we may have not even realized we held. It is a shakeup of the very world order, and we are standing right in the middle of it. Our own treatment of our indigenous brothers and sisters in this country should give us a serious reason to pause if we are ever tempted to point fingers at our friends to the south. Do you still feel the need to stand alone? Do you still feel the need to believe that our own strength is good enough to face a world that has changed so drastically and so fast that most of us can't even fathom what it may look like when everything is said and done? The reality is that not one of us is strong enough to weather this time on our own. Not one of us has all or perhaps even any of the answers. We are lost now. And you know what? It is okay to admit that. We are lost. But we won't dare admit it. Not really. Secretly, many of us hope that we return to the world we knew before all this happened. We just need to get through this and things will go back to normal. We hold on to that fantasy even as we know the truth of the matter. There isn't any going back. That is the kind of truth that can break us if we try and stay stalwart and strong. But we are not called to be stalwart and strong. We are called to be honest about our hurt, our fear, our anxiety about the future. We might be horrible about naming those truths, yet it is not our strength that is needed. It is the ability to name what we are feeling and to trust. To find it in ourselves to let go and truly know that God guides us. Perhaps that is why Jesus in our gospel this morning mentions that the cynical and dismissive audience around him who dismissed John the Baptist to be an ascetic and Jesus, a drunkard, are so wrapped up in the myth of their own superiority that they simply cannot hear what Jesus is trying to tell them. They can't. Their ears are blocked. Instead, 
God's will is revealed to infants. The young understand. This is not the first time Jesus mentions or engages with children. Children often become a measuring stick which Christ uses against the adults he is surrounded with. The children get it through their innate trust, their openness, their lack of suspicion. They know what it is to trust because their life depends on it. They know this and it translates into their life of faith as well. We complain about people with a Sunday school faith, lacking true maturity and discernment, but those children with Sunday school faith are more willing to trust and be guided by God than many of us. At this point, I don't really think that we are being served too well on relying on our own strength and our own belief in how things should be. The yoke that we are choosing to pick up as we make this choice is heavy, killing, burdensome yoke. The yoke that we are choosing to pick is a burden too great for many of us. It is the kind of burden that breaks people, breaks relationships, breaks communities. We think it is our responsibility to bear this yoke. But my friends, it isn't. It never has been. One of the songs we liked to sing over and over again in the long-term care homes where I served as chaplain was, Are you weary? Are you heavy-hearted? Tell it to Jesus. Well, I don't need to reiterate again the kinds of burden the residents and their loved ones carry in long-term care settings. Dalit Christians in India sing, cast your burden on the Lord for he cares for you. They did not believe, they do not believe in a magical Jesus to wipe away their burdens and tears, but they believe in a Jesus who knows their burden, who understands the weight of their burden. And here is the invitation we are given again. The invitation Christ gave to his audience that day, encouraging them to come to him. He would give them rest from that which is killing them. Those words echoed throughout history. They are words that speak to us now as we struggle under the burden of this time in history. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. This, my friends, is the welcome we hear again and again. This is the welcome given to us in words of hope, if ever hope could have a voice. Our Savior asking us, imploring us to come as children do, with the trust and hope of a child. Can we? Are we truly open to being set free? Because there is a caveat. 
as there always is in matters of faith. To be set free is not to be free for whatever pleasure may come our way. To be set free is to be set free into a life where we can stand with our brothers and sisters of color, where we can fight for the rights of the created world, where we can dream of a world with a new economic order that doesn't leave the marginalized behind, but resembles what God has in mind all along, manifested so beautifully in the covenant Yahweh established with the people of Israel. A new kind of society. A society based on justice, equality, and a place for all people. We cannot champion any of this if we are crushed under the burden of our own solitary pride. We cannot truly follow Christ if we are arrogant enough to believe that we are strong on our own. So here is the call again, my friends. Cast your burden. So let your burden go. Give it to Christ and re-enter the world made new by the grace of God, by the freedom which gives us love, to love all people. Come to me all, you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The world may break us, my friends, but God lifts us up so that we may in turn lift those around us up. In this difficult time, such news, such good, amazing news truly is balm to the soul. For in Christ, may we find the rest. For in Christ, may we find that peace. For in Christ, may we find the courage and the strength to set free as we are set free. For this we say, Amen.